This is the Roller Coaster Podcast, and I'm your host, Lucy Q. Life is a wild ride. It has twists and turns. It's scary, exciting, and downright fun. So throw your head back, arms in the air, and come along with me for the ride. Life is like a roller coaster, baby, baby. I want to ride, ride, ride. Confidence impacts how we see ourselves and how we show up in the world. It's said that we're all born with confidence. It's what drives us as toddlers to explore the world around us. Unfortunately for many, life can bash it out of us. Joining me today is Karen Gray, who helps people step into their power, level up, and find their voice. Hi, Karen. Hi, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me. So my first question, yes. how do we really live with confidence? How do we embrace it and how do we live with it? Um, that's the, the ultimate quest, isn't it? Because I think so often, um, as you said, life beats it out of us. And I think when we, my experience has shown, when we are able to accept and be content and see value in who we are and what we bring to the world without comparing and looking sideways at all of the things that we feel like we're not, that's when we can begin to truly embrace the confidence within. So it's a pathway and a journey, but it all starts within. Is there a lot of um, misconception around what confidence is? Because I'm thinking back to, you know, my high school years. Yeah. When for some reason, people thought that I was really confident, Mm -hmm. but really I was probably just as terrified as every other kid in this school. And, you know, I was sort of, I've always been curious as to why somebody thought I had that confidence when I didn't feel it myself. Absolutely. I think you make a great point. And, um, you know, that saying, fake it till you make it. There's a lot of us that have this outward appearance of being really strong. And we equate strong to being confident when strong can actually be a defense mechanism. And it's a protection because we're really on the inside, very insecure and very um, unconfident. So um, I think it it actually is a a wrong perception and a, a misnomer that being outwardly um, strong and maybe unapproachable or outwardly bold, it equates to a feeling of confidence. Because um, there's many people who are very um, quiet and reserved and maybe seem like they're meek and mild, and really they're very confident. They're just not outward, out, you know, um, outgoing or um, they just don't have that protection mechanism because they don't feel a need for it. So how does our confidence, how does that impact how people perceive us, how we show up and how we function in the world? Um, I think confidence impacts everything that we do. I think it has um, an imprint on who we are and how we, how we, um, how we convey that to the world. And um when I'll, I'll just speak from personal experience because I don't want to speak for everyone, but when I felt really broken by things that have happened in my past, I couldn't see the value within. Thought I had nothing to to bring to the table, um, but at the time, because I had to function in the in society and I was in sales. I had to present myself as being confident, even though on the inside, I didn't feel that at all. Um, So it's that fake it till you make it kind of scenario where I would insert myself into situations that I would choose to um, be more comfortable with. So I I found my comfort zone around people of like minds or places where I could use humor to mask the um, lack of confidence, you know, we all find coping mechanisms. And um, I think when, when we get into a, a business situation or a personal situation, 
that really triggers those insecurities within, that's when those, um, the lack of confidence really shines and it, it really is a struggle. Otherwise, as adults, we just learn to mask it. So, I mean, masking it only works for so long. Absolutely. Eventually, somehow, it's, it's going to come out that, you know, you have to deal with this confidence issue. So, you, you mentioned coping me mechanisms earlier. What did you go through to go from recognizing your coping mechanisms to seeing your own value? Um, for me, I, my daughter um, began wanting to compete in, at the time it was rodeo queen pageants. And that meant she was putting herself out there to be judged. And I began to notice that a lot of my insecurities were manifesting in her. And so that really caused me to pause and take a really tough look at how my own life and my journey, my choices, the things that had happened were impacting my daughter. And so I began to question and hold um, kind of a mirror to what I was struggling with and, and ask, is this how I would want my daughter to feel about herself? And is the thing I'm dealing with, is it really true? Or is it just a, re a reaction and an emotion of something that happened to me? And so by diving into those questions and just painstakingly one by one, um, just holding them out in the light and saying, okay, this happened, this is how it made me feel, but this is no longer who I am. This is no longer true for me and accepting who I was at the time. So things like um, little comments, right? They get said to us as, as we're growing up, they begin to form these ideals on how we see ourselves. So we see ourselves through the lens of someone or a comment that happened to us younger. And that's what I was looking through. So my adoption journey um, and being adopted and little comments that were very harmless and um, not maliciously intended, they hurt. Things like my family would say, you're chosen, right? But that meant somebody didn't choose me. And so they didn't intend for me to hear that, but that's what I heard. And so that had a huge impact on me. Growing up, I felt abandoned and rejected by my biological family. So there was something about me not good enough. And so once, as I started taking those situations my daughter was going through and, and looking at them, like this is how I reacted, these are the choices I've made because I felt not good enough. Now she's feeling not good enough, but I know she is. Wait, so am I. And so I really was able to go through that journey with her and really learn. And, and when I felt something that I felt very insignificant compared to someone, um, I didn't feel as good as that person on Facebook or this person I worked with or that friend. Um, I didn't have what they had. Um, I began using gratitude as the mechanism to reprogram my mind. Maybe I don't have that, but I have this. Maybe I'm not like that, but I'm like this. So it just was a, um, just a mindset thing. I began to, to value and appreciate and be grateful for what I did have. And when it was almost like a magic pill, because then I began to feel confident internally. It just happened because I was grateful for the lessons. I was grateful for the scars because now I could help my daughter avoid those. Now I could help other people avoid those. And the confidence just, it, it filled in the gaps that I was removing. These, I called them rocks. So these rocks that were in my life that I'd been carrying all of these years, that baggage. That I was, was just going to say that baggage. <laughs> yes. Don't we all carry that? It gets heavier and heavier and heavier. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And women are the worst. We carry these, these, this baggage around. And when I took the rock out and said, you know what, you no longer serve me, but the lesson does. 
I'm going to keep the lesson. It's really light, but I'm getting rid of this rock. And now you're my next stepping stone to the next place I'm going. It sounds like you went through a, a process of reframing past experiences and looking upon them with the wisdom that you've gained this far. And, you know, as you mentioned, um, that innocent comment when you were, when, when people say you were chosen because yeah. you were adopted, you know, as, as a parent, you think that you're making a child feel special, not mm -hmm. even thinking for a minute that inadvertently, you're causing hurt, you're causing a, you know, some pain. Right. So it sounds like that you sort of went back to those past experiences and, and really sort of reframed them with who you are today. Yeah, absolutely. You, you nailed it. I think we have to be willing to go to those, um, those hurts, those raw moments or those raw memories or places of pain um, and allow that to heal to begin truly moving into the confidence space. And sometimes that can be done on your own. Sometimes that can be done with a coach. And sometimes you really do need um, a counselor or a therapist or a doctor to help you through those. And all of that's okay. It's all okay. So after you went through this, this sort of self-reflection process of reframing things, how did that then help you show up more authentically in your life? When I, when I took the power of the pain away, I no longer carried the shame that came with it. And it was like this, this beautiful seesaw. When the pain was gone, the shame was gone. And it was like the confidence and the, the power within me lifted. And I was able to then recognize it when I saw what I was, was previously feeling in other people. And it was like the universe gave me this gift of insight. It's like, okay, I've, I've now healed me. Now go use that to heal someone else. And you help, you help, is it just women or women and men with confidence? I, I work with both women and men. I so have both. What are some of the steps that you walk some, somebody through to help them regain their confidence? And as you say, level up. Um, it's, I think it all begins with acknowledging the pain at first and really going back and finding that internal block. Where did it start? Being willing to acknowledge it, face it, and truly identify, is it true? Or what is the truth here about that? And so when you, when you begin to see it for what it was, a, a situation, uh, whatever happened at that time, whether it was my choice or a choice that was put upon me, you begin to take its power away. And that's when you begin to take your power back. And so um, I work with a lot of women who are, and men, who are in sales or in business. Most of them are entrepreneurs or contractors, real estate agents, business owners. And it's amazing the similarities that we have regardless of our gender, background, Canada, America, Australia, it doesn't matter. We're all human and we're all very fragile on the inside. We all wanna be seen, heard, valued, loved. And when that primal need gets wounded, we carry it with us and then begin to insert it in places as a justification. This happened to me because of that, because I'm this. And when we can take that power away from that thing, then we no longer have those excuses. And now we find a place to step in. And that's where the, the confidence begins to come from. And so, um, you know, just identifying, I reacted this way. Let's say you're in sales and you don't want to pick up the phone and make a call because you're afraid of that rejection. Yes. I, I, everybody, I've been in sales. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all of a sudden the phone weighs, you yes, know, a million, ton and, and you're, and it's, yes, it's gonna and you're going to pick it up and, and all you could think about, well, what if they say no? What if I'm calling at the wrong time? What if I'm bothering them? And all this chatter starts going off in your head. And it's just like, whoa, wait a second. I haven't even, well, I was just going to say, I haven't even, 
you know, press the buttons, but I mean, I don't think we have buttons on phones anymore. <laughs> What you meant dating myself yeah i mean what about the dial right um but yeah so the, oh, geez. the phone becomes and now i'm dating myself um the phone becomes this um venomous monster that nobody wants to face when really it's not the phone at all it's the opportunity that something's going to happen on the other end and someone's going to confirm the fear that we have within they're going to confirm that what you have isn't valuable, that what you have, they don't need, and they're going to reject you. So if you find yourself in that moment, and again, we'll stick with the picking up the phone to make a sales call. What is something that we could say in that moment to move past the fear mm -hmm. and then sort of step into our power? I love it. So um, an exercise that I do, I call it a breakthrough. So I sit here with my client and say, when was the time I made a phone call or talked to someone that they needed what I offered? How did I feel? Okay, well, let's, sorry, I jumped ahead. How does it feel when I'm afraid? I feel, when I, when I don't wanna pick up the phone, I feel afraid, I feel um, fearful, I feel regret that I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do because this is what I need to make money. So then I'm self-sabotaging and then I'm feeling guilty. So all of these negative things. Um, and we know where that comes from, this fear of rejection. So I identified the emotion and the consequence. That's first. So we have to acknowledge. Second, I wanna take a time when I picked up the phone and it worked. When did I pick up the phone and call someone and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you called me because I was just talking about this or, wow, I'm really interested. Maybe this can help me or no, I don't need it, but someone else does whatever it is that you're calling about. That's probably happened as well. How did that make you feel? And then walk through the emotions again. I felt valued. I felt heard. I felt like they saw me and they saw value in me that I could help them and that gave me purpose. So if you think about the two, the same action took place before the conversation. I picked up the phone and I dialed it. I reached out. The consequences on the other end are completely out of your control and have no bearing on your value because when you hung up the phone both times, you were the same person. The other person's interaction with you didn't change your value. It only changed how you saw yourself. And I think that comes down to, you know, our how we perceive our own self-worth, uh -huh. where if you're always looking for an outside influence to right. get your self-worth from, uh -huh. you're always going to be basing, you know, your inner feelings on what somebody else says or does but once you realize that your self-worth only you can give it to yourself it cannot be you cannot go outside and get it so once you can detach yourself from the consequences mm -hmm. you know when, once you take the power away from the person on the other side of the phone to make you feel good or bad you know there's um there's a saying from Oh my goodness, Eisenhower, um, that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And so if you go to the phone and say, I know I have purpose, I know that people need my help, let's see if this person recognizes it. The consequences are inconsequential because I still feel valuable. I still know what I have. They just may or may not need it today. And that's okay. I'm still valuable. I still have the value. I still give the same effort to the phone call because I don't care what they say. Ultimately, we all have a choice. We have a choice how to act and how to react. Right. And in that moment, we can either choose to base our self-worth on what somebody else is doing or choose to know that it, it lives with, within us. Right. So when you can separate your value, like you said, 
from exterior influences and you choose to see the value within, um, you begin to take the power away from other people's comments, other people's reactions and begin to, it's the, this is where the law of attraction comes into play. And um, I don't know if your, your listeners follow the law of attraction, um, but whatever you're putting out there is what the universe is going to bring to you. So if you're saying to yourself, I have value, I have worth, I have the ability to help people. The person on the other end of the call is going to feel a different kind of energy when you're having a conversation. It's more positive, it's more welcoming, it's more upbeat. So they're naturally going to be more receptive to it. And it's all subconscious. You don't even realize it's happening. But then opportunities come and you see them rather than automatically assuming someone doesn't want you, you're thinking, wow, I think they do. So you you just handle the conversation differently and thus send out different energy, which attracts, energy attracts like energy. You're going to start bringing it to you. And it's this, you know, instead of a vicious circle of negativity and um, insecurity, it's this positive circle of acceptance and gratitude and appreciation for yourself and for others. And I find that, that once you start practicing, yeah, then the universe will give you back little hints and that gets you excited. And then you do it more and you do it more. And then it just becomes how you do things. Right. It, it, yeah. And how you do anything is how you do everything. Now, if somebody listening wants to connect with you so that they can level up, step into their power and, and show up more authentically, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at Coach Karen Gray, and that's uh, K-A-R-E-N-G-R-A-Y. And then my email is Karen at CoachKarenGray.com, so they can reach out to me in any of those ways. Perfect. Well, if you're listening, I will put all of those links in the show notes. And thank you, Karen, so much for helping share your message today. Thank you for giving space to share it and for the positivity and the energy you send out in the world. I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Want to chat or share your ideas about today's show? Pop me an email at hello at the rollercoasterpodcast.com. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at The Roller Coaster Podcast. Our theme song, Roller Coaster, was performed by The Lucky Setback. Audio editing by the one and only Jeff Quigley of Quigley Creative. Love is like.